Hey, what's going on? We've been getting a lot of questions about this particular species. It's the Emidora subligosa, that's Latin for the pink belly side neck turtle. And that's what we'll be talking all about here on this episode of Camp Kennan. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Kennedy. So you guys want to get into a more exotic water turtle. You've probably already had some red-eared sliders. Maybe you've had some yellow bellies or some of the native cooters here in North America. But you're looking to do something a little bit different. Well, look no further than the pink belly side neck turtle. So let's get one closer here and I'll pick it up for you. But they're a fantastic tropical species from Northern Australia and from uh, New Guinea. Uh, these animals are tropical, as I just said, so you're going to want to make sure that you keep them warm all year long. And I got a fly river that's hanging out in here, too. Let's see. Oh, we're going to get the big gal. Hold on. Let's pull her out. Oh, oh and they got sharp little claws. Okay, so this is about, uh, they'll get a little bit bigger than this. This is a female pink belly side neck, and it's very similar to sexing as some of your other uh, yellow bellies or North American turtles, and that is the size of the tail and where the cloaca is located uh, at the tail. So if it was a male, it's going to be way more uh, towards the tip of the tail. But if you notice, this is a highly aquatic species. Look at how streamlined this animal is. Um, just a fantastic, beautiful animal. As they get older, the red goes away, but I kind of like them for their personalities because these guys actually do uh, really well uh, in a pond like situation especially here in Florida where I can keep them outdoors all year long that being said it's pretty important to make sure that uh, they stay warm so if you are from the southern states you're gonna want to make sure that you put uh, cycle water through or heat the water some way you never want it to get colder than 65 degrees because then these animals will start to have problems they're an omnivore also so they're going to be eating some plant matter, uh, but they do very well on Missouri tortoise diet, Zoomed turtle diet. Um, I use the Missouri crocodile diet. Um, they do very well with that. And these guys are a side neck species. And what we've learned in the past episodes about side necks is that you're going to find side necks either on the equator or in the southern hemisphere. There are no side neck species that are north of the equator uh, anywhere in the globe. So you can kind of see this is a really cool animal. Look at that face. It almost has a little bit of a smile with its beak. Uh, love the way they look. I've always been quite fond of some of the Australian or Australasian species of turtles. Uh, and as I said, you know, when you start getting more, whoa, when you start getting more and more into turtles, uh, you just want to start to uh, keep some of the more exotic species. And this is just such a cool animal because they're readily available and bred in captivity here in the United States. In fact, I have some babies that I'm going to show you in just a little bit, but you can kind of see how these animals are just so cool and different for us to work with here in North America. Now, as I said, they're highly aquatic. This is Slinky's Pond. Slinky and these guys cohabitate. They probably find each other in the wild as well. Um, but Slinky doesn't mess with these guys because he's well fed. So I don't really worry about him hurting any of these turtles. Obviously, these are large enough to where he can not do anything to them. Uh, so that's good. But getting back to the turtles and what they need, you'll notice there's about two and a half foot of water in this pond. Uh, they love swimming around. They need basking areas. Basically, guys, you got to treat them just like a red-eared slider. They're going to eat very similar things. They're going to need all the basking, uh, except they don't hibernate like red ears. So that's what you're going to have to look out for. Another thing they love to eat are crayfish, shrimp. You can get freshwater shrimp, any kind of dragonfly larva. And behind me, I, I must make it. It looks like the boys and girls over there arguing. So Guapo's getting up on his perch. Please don't mind the noise as we try and learn about pink belly side necks. Anyhow, this is a real beautiful animal. I love them. Uh, males are going to be a bit smaller. In this uh, little pond, I have six. There's one male and five females. So uh, he's got his hands full. But I get babies all the time, so I'll tell you what. Why don't we put this gal back and uh, we'll head over and see some babies.
So what's really cool with any species is reproducing them, right? So I want to show you a little turtle nursery I have. I don't do too many aquatic turtles, but I do happen to have some baby pink belly side necks. And how about that? That is one of the cutest little baby turtles you'll ever meet. And you can see just how beautiful that baby and that little shell is. And he's doing what he's supposed to. He's pulled his head into the side. Uh, and again, you know, with any baby uh, Chelonian, turtle or tortoise, they're so helpless. Uh, these animals, you know, definitely have a long way to go before this shell is gonna be any kind of protection. But keeping a baby turtle like this, it's very simple here. Uh, I can probably fill it up with a little bit more water. We haven't had a lot of rain, so I'm probably gonna get the hose over here and make it about. A you wanna keep the babies in water, the depth that's at least two of them high. So if you stand them up and then another one up, that's how deep the water should be. This way, in case they flip over, they can right themselves and not drown in the water because uh, turtles are air-breathing vertebrates and they can drown. Uh, these little guys are going to eat bloodworms. They're going to eat some of the turtle prepared turtle diet. We have a little Zoomed turtle diet right here, and uh, it really works well. The hatchling formula because it's small and they can really get it. But usually, when I am working with baby aquatic turtles, um, I use live food, live bloodworms, live brine shrimp, something that wiggles or moves because then that really gets their attention and they swim after it. Uh, they like a lot of hiding areas to feel secure. Bad Asking areas, UV light is very important, but this is just such a cool little turtle that grows up to be just like that big female we saw. In fact, that big female, she laid eight eggs and these are one of her babies. So now you know a little bit more about the pink belly side neck turtle from Australia and New Guinea. It's an incredible little species, does well in captivity, so hey, if you're looking to step out of the norm, try one of these little dudes, but give them a good home, alright? See you next time.